In tonight's episode, Josh buys a Delver and creates his own doppelganger. I straddle the sack cell, come in second place at the rodeo, and we both build a boat so we can finally eat people in peace. All of this and more on episode 145 of Indie Game Riot. Bonus footage will teach Eric to read. Everybody, I am Josh, joined once again by Mr. Eric Hunter. Hello. Um, I just want to point out, since we're going to be starting off, well, first of all, let me just tell you that we're talking about some cool things today, like uh, Image and Form and Zoink, the two indie studios are doing something cool. Uh, also, some updates on Opus Magnum being released on various platforms. Your favorite game. And, uh, of course, we're talking about... Uh, Delver, Staxel, and You Must Build a Boat as the featured games. But first, we'll talk about our weeks. And let me go first, because a uh, fly eagles fly, as you see down in the bottom right-hand corner that way. Uh, fly eagles fly, baby. Okay. I don't know what that means. That means the Eagles won the Super Bowl. Oh. And uh, y'all can suck my dick. All right. We're just going to put you in that same place as we put the... Uh... New Orleans Saints. Just, God felt sorry for you, so we gave you the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay. It's like, you know what? We're really sorry. Just give you this win. So this guy is a fan day. of the Bengals. Uh, Aha, I am not a fan of the Bengals. I am just a fan of football. Okay, in that case, you're a fan of the Bengals just by proximity. That's bullshit. <laughs> if you don't have a team that you have stated publicly, then you are given your proximity team oh no i have stated publicly that i'm a Bengals fan but i am currently on hiatus from watching Bengals football <laughs> for the past three years and will continue to be on hiatus and that's all baseball god i can't wait for baseball well the phillies baseball. are up and coming at least uh Jesus. they they have shitty they have don't sh- act just because the eagles won the super bowl don't act like philadelphia has any whoa, 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 notable whoa, whoa. sports teams come on the they phillies. won they won the world series in 2008 first of all right Okay. Uh, but anyway, they have an upcoming cool. team. They have a really good, young, talented team. It just has to get put together well, and they have to. Perform. So, like any baseball team. <laughs> well, no, because then you look at New York Yankees, and they just fail all the time with their million. With all roster. the money in the world, yeah. and they're still terrible. So I'm just saying. Anyway, so funny. Uh, why don't your Reds go back to cheating, and maybe you'll win. God, yes. The Reds are the Patriots of baseball. Please. <laughs> I mean, how else am I supposed to win? Not that anyone gives a shit who listens to this game. My People that listen to the show don't give a shit about short sports, but I want to know your opinion on Pete Rose. And for those of you who don't know, Pete Rose, famous uh, baseball player who was basically shunned from the baseball community. Allegedly. For, for betting. <laughs> for allegedly uh, betting on baseball games, which is illegal in baseball because... Uh, obviously, you can throw the game and make money then. Right, exactly. Which is actually what happened way back in the day, like in what, the 20s or, thir- or 30s or something? Uh, with the White Sox? No. Yeah, what? It, was, it was like the White Sox. They like threw the game. Oh, you're just talking about betting on the game and throwing the game. Yeah, yeah I yeah. thought you meant Pete Rose. I was like, nah, dude, he's still alive. Like, he's still no, kicking no. around and doing just fine. Yeah, I know. But anyway, do you think he should be in the Hall of Fame? I'm curious. Because recently, I've been hearing a lot about like because the baseball or because football Hall of Fame happened, Terrell Owens got right. in. And he didn't do anything like illegal, but he's like kind of an asshole, so it took forever for well, him. Well, I think I think you throw out the 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 credibility of the MLB Hall of Fame when you have to put an asterisk next to Barry Bonds' number. Do you know what I mean? But okay, look at it this way: I think the Hall of Fame is a museum, right? Yes, and therefore it is its job to record history. And as history puts it, Barry Bonds, first of all, one of the hardest things to do in sports, if not the hardest to do, steroids or not, is to hit a 90 mile per hour fastball. This right. tiny little yeah, thing flying gonna, at your face. You. you know what I mean? So, right. and they did it with the best of them. I think they belong in Hall of Fame. And you don't even need an asterisk. It's just that they gave a little blurb of, like, oh, this is what they accomplished over the career. Why not add, they did this with the help of steroids, as did many other people who are probably already in the Hall of Fame that just didn't that are get still caught. still on steroids. You know yeah. what I mean? So, uh, yep. that's just ways. Yeah, I think um, 
I think the problem is is that with the just technology in general with steroids and like not even that like I don't know if you heard about the whole um, the contact crisis that happened I think like ten years ago. Did you hear about that? I uh, know. So, so some somebody invented a contact that you could wear as a batter uh, that picks out the red and things that highlights red, so you'd be able to see the stitching on the ball. Oh, cool. So for a while there, so you MLB can see the was, rotation. Exactly. Okay. So for a while there, MLB uh, was thinking about changing the color of the baseball to it's kind of counteract weird. this. Yeah, like <laughs> it's it, it's just like. I don't for any any normal person who watches baseball, they're going to look at it and say, this is the most boring fucking sport in the world. Why would anybody watch this? And that's fine. You know, like, just let baseball be baseball. Just let it happen what it is. And, I, you know, should they be in the Hall of Fame? Yes. If you're looking at, like, you're looking at it as in, like, this is a museum and we need to categorize these things and keep track of all this stuff, then absolutely. We should, that he should definitely be in the Same Hall of Fame. Same thing with Pete Rose. I believe he should be in the Hall of Fame as well. Just put that sure. up. Sure. The original but, question, but... Right. No, yeah, I agree. But I think for him, I don't think he wants to be nowadays because he makes so much money as being the guy who was not in the (laughs) Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. He doesn't want anything to do with the Hall of Fame. (laughs) Zebralin, hi, uh, in chat. And just uh, for those of you who are listening to the recorded version, we're doing this live. You should join us sometime. He said, sports suck. That's your prerogative, and I'm okay with that. I, I fully understand that the vast majority of people that listen to this podcast or watch this podcast don't give a shit about sports. Uh, and it's uh, it's a generalization, but I think it's a correct one. If I'm, if I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I believe I am correct. So, uh, anyway, how's your week been uh, since I was celebrating the Super Bowl? It was good. I was getting over a cold and playing video games. So You're still getting over a cold. I... No, I am completely over it now. This is just me. This is me now. This oh, is just how I. This is how I live life. my life. Yeah, yeah. This is me walking away. Gross. This is me walking away. <laughs> no, so I um I picked up um, shovel knight for my switch. Uh-huh. Uh And I already had shovel knight uh, on Steam, but I didn't get to play it that much because you know, babies and bullshit. So, um. It was twenty four ninety nine, and it comes with every single expansion pack, not including the one that hasn't been released yet. Cool. That blows my mind. So technically, and they're full fledged games. Yeah. So you have the original one with Shovel Knight, and then you have the one with Plague Knight, and then the one with um. I want to say Spectre, but I don't think that's yes. Right. Is yeah, it, Spectre? it is Spectre Knight. Yeah, because okay. King's Knight is the last one. Yeah. So you're getting four games for twenty five dollars, like that's amazing. Nice. Like, I mean, it's such a great deal, and like Yacht Club Games is so smart about the way that they've not only like developed and they've published and promoted this game, but just just all the little things too. Oh, they made you know? a like, ton of money. I'm telling you, what, whenever we get, are able to get the Indie Game Hall of Fame started, someday, that's going to be in there. Almost. Is it going to have an asterisk next to it? For steroids, it, yes. Yeah, that, that, see? <laughs> Yacht, Club, Club, Yacht Club Games, they've been juicing. You heard it here first, folks. That's right. Breaking but news. I was just... And, I mean, just... So, obviously, the game's... It's it's a solid game. Um, it You know, everything about it is pretty much on the edge of being perfect from, you know, gameplay mechanics to that, um, that kind of that game feel and then to, like, the controls and the sounds and the music and all that stuff. But... On top of that, like they've even done things where you can change the sex of the characters, so you can change the gender of Shovel Knight both with how can um, you tell the look of you can kind of tell like the they put uh, it's less on armor. armor. Okay. No, it's not that. It's the armor is a little bit more slimming. That's okay. the only way I can really like, describe like it. It's more curvy. No, because curvy's curvy's not the right word. It rather than it being like kind of big and like like bostrious like in the shoulders it's a little bit more smaller down and it's a little bit more of a veer frame than like straight down okay like a big barrel chest if that makes sense sure. um but you can also change the noun or the uh the pronouns that are used as well based on the gender yeah just like little like when i first saw it i was like i don't even know what the hell i'm looking at because none of this shit makes any sense i'm kind of curious that's... what they're gonna do after all the shovel knight stuff is done see that's what i'm worried about like i don't what do you what do you do They've created their 
you know, like They've do you go their for... magnum opus? I know. Because, well, and think of uh, that's there's a, that's uh, a call forward. Yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> a call forward. We've talked about this game three <laughs> times. There is no call forwarding on this game. Um, what was uh, who made Torchlight? Um, Rune. Yeah, uh, yeah, Runic. Runic. They made that weird. Speaking of sports ball, uh, kind of weird basketball um, soccer game. That was I don't remember like that RPG. Though. Yeah, just because it bombed and the company went out of business because of it, or they're on the verge of going out of business. No, they already they're already gone. But I didn't know they, okay, of they that. shit the bed already. Yeah, yeah, they released. They were I can't remember the name of the game, but it looked interesting. But it was so radically different and out there. But Yacht Club, like you said, Yacht Club has been super smart. They've been super right. smart. That's about what I'm it. saying. Like, how do you move on? Like, and actually, have... Runic got I thought got picked up by another company. If I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So that could have had something to do with it. Uh, just to put this out there on a different topic real quick. Z Merlin said uh, he, that he bought Rusty Lake Paradise and that was a fun game. Or did, did you buy Ru- Rusty Lake Paradise? Or Because there's like a, actually a bunch of Rusty Lake games that are all set in the same universe. But I, it's really cool. I always love hearing uh, when people buy games that we talk about. It makes me feel like that we're helping support devs. So thank you. Thank for, for um, Hob. You. Was Hobby. the name of the game? Help us support us. Hob, yes. Hob. Yep. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 So no, they completely yeah. shut down in November of last year. Yeah. Yeah, they're gone. Uh, we covered that. We did. Yeah. You don't. It was remember. just so. But I mean, so they made two amazing games: Torchlight and Torchlight Two. Like those games are great. Like from top to bottom, like they take their genre to the nth degree. Like I don't think you can make those games that much better for what they are. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then. So they created their Magnum Opus. Um, there you go. And then they come out with this other game five years later. I got to say, though, from what I've seen of Hob, it wasn't a bad game. No, it looks interesting, but it wasn't obviously like they, they shit the bed, though. You know, like well, there wasn't much marketing on it, to be perfectly honest. I think it picked up by a lot of press and. Uh, it didn't like whoever they're publishing through did not give a shit about it. It seemed like. Well, I think it was them. I think they're they were the. I thought they got picked up by, by a publisher, but I may be wrong. Yeah, I can find out. So. The ability. Uh, no, they, they're the publisher. All right. Well, it did not get marketed. No. And I think that uh, Yacht Club Games has got marketing down pat. And they've got a lot of support from Nintendo, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, they, Nintendo's definitely taken them under their wing. Uh, for sure. I mean, that's a yeah. So, Which yeah. I don't know. I don't they know. They have their own damn thing amiibo or thing, or they do have a stupid amiibo. God, those amiibos are so silly and dumb. Ah, yeah, no, I wouldn't spend that much money on those. No, I, I bought know. one. I bought a Legend of Zelda one. That was it. I mean, if I got one, I would ju- I would be like, cool, man. But it would not be used to play games. For one, I don't have. No, it sits on a shelf. I don't, don't have any nuts. Nintendo anything. Uh, I haven't owned a Nintendo since the 64. No, I have a D- I have a DS, uh, not a 3DS. I have a DS, but um, I do have. I bought that. Um, what the hell, Disney Infinity stuff? Yeah, like two weeks before they dis- announced that they were before shutting they, it down. They, I was like, right. fucking shit, man. Yeah, you. Can I bought still it to play with my kids for like four dollars now. That so that pissed me the fuck off. Yep. But anyway, you know what? Uh, it would make us feel better about our lo- um, losses. <laughs> Get some news from the Indie News Injection. Yeah, an Indie News Injection. Are you bored with the same old games? Yeah. Why, then give yourself an Indie News Injection. Thanks, Indie Games. This week on Indie News Injection, the very first thing we're going to be talking about is we have some big news about two publishing companies indie not publishing well they do publish two indie uh development companies that are merging to form a new one uh image form and zoink are merging to create thunderful uh their own their own joint venture however they will not be uh like getting rid of their own companies they will be still making games separately but they wanted to partner up to also make games together um so they are actually both based in Sweden, so they have that going for them. Um, but basically, that I guess they've been friends with each other for, for a while, and that they've uh, just really wanted to work together. Um, so they're going to be creating their own IPs, and then uh, individual IPs as well. I They haven't announced... Um, 
Yeah, they haven't announced anything specifically. I'm just taking a look here just to make sure. You're good. Uh, yeah. Take your time. They haven't announced anything specifically coming out under the Thunderful uh, tag, but um, Zo- first of all, <coughs> Steam or, or I'm sorry, Image and Form recently, somewhat recently released SteamWorld Dig Two. Of course, um, I would assume that they are. Wor- I think they're working on a, another heist game. I believe that makes sense. Um, but I haven't heard. I haven't heard much about that. Uh, however, Zoink actually has two games coming out, uh, Faye and then another one called Flipping Death. Flipping Death is going to be, from what I understand, in the same style and genre type as um, like Stick It to the Man and uh, uh, the Zombie Vikings was the other one. Um, but Faye, interestingly enough, I think is being published by, by EA, I think is that one. Oh, uh, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not a hundred percent sure what the deal with Faye is. I haven't. I've heard more about Flipping Death and Faye, mostly because I have because I have friends that voice act for Flipping Death. <laughs> no, not, Nancy Cartwright. Not Nancy Cartwright though. Oh no. No. Okay. Um, I almost had a part in Stick of the Man. I'm a little upset about that. Anyway. No enough, idea what you're talking. Enough about, about my failures as a voice actor. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so I thought that was pretty cool. Wonderful. Keep an eye out for that. Uh, you know what else we should be keeping an eye out for, Eric? Opus Magnum. Yeah. It's finally been released on GOG of all places. How weird is that? So what uh, What spurred their, their 180? No idea. The only thing I could find was on GOG's Twitter uh, accounts. Uh, what was this posted? 31st of January. Um, For those of you that don't know, Opus Magnum, obviously a really cool puzzle game, did uh, got rejected from from being released on GOG, and now has uh, now GOG all of a sudden is releasing them on GOG. So there's that, right? Because who knows why? <laughs> um, doesn't make any sense. Anyhow, um, so the the only thing I could find uh, was on um, GOG's Twitter account uh, with a tweet that says, "We did it, you did it, and then we did it." It's good to finally have the brilliant yet approachable Opus Magnum 10% off. What does that mean? <laughs> just, I, so there's so much I'm, seeping from that statement that, uh, that 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 they're just trying to like pull some like PR like they're uh, they're trying to repair some of their PR for not accepting it in the first place. Yeah, that's so uh, if you kind of like browse down through the thread um somebody said they're fairly certain that they do take community wishes into account as well. There were quite a lot of votes for Opus Magnum. When the demand is high enough, they probably reconsider their initial decision. And God came back and said, of course, the game's outstanding quality and community demand uh, demand speak loudly and clearly. We're human. We're not infallible, uh, but we're also not immovable. It's great that we get to listen, reevaluate, and bring Opus Magnums to our catalog in the end. It's worth... Uh, it's every bit worth it. So, I don't know. Like, I'm... I just like the the stuff they're saying kind of pisses me off, right? Just because well, initially they're like, "I don't give a fuck about this game." Well, no. So here's the official statement, which I think we read before, but I'll read it again because again, it just doesn't make any sense. It just says, uh, "As for the official statement, the only thing that we would be okay with sharing is that Opus Magnum did not pass our internal curation system." I mean, really? are they trying to say that it's automated or that someone is just an? Agent? I mean, how could you automate something like that? I mean, there's algorithms and shit. You don't know. Uh, no, I, mean, I don't. That's why I ask. I mean, they always turn out shitty. Ask YouTube. But... Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> uh, it says, we rarely ever want to share any details on the actual system, how it looks, and what it means. <coughs> because it's just too individual. We take into consideration many other factors than just the game itself. The reviews we provide, for example, do not review the game in general. So like an objective game review on PC Gamer or whatnot. But we do it from the angle of our entire user base. Which just says to me, they don't think that a game like this would sell to their user base. So why take the time to put it on and you know keep up with updates and all that stuff if they don't think anybody's going to buy it well obviously that's what people it means are to me. because i mean that what they're saying is that people bitched enough and they're like fine jeez 
But well, then to make them seem like the good guy, they're like, we reevaluated and, you know, we true. did this together. Like, they're celebrating right. their accomplishment of releasing a, right. a cool game. Why not? I don't know. It, it, it pisses me off when they try and spin it. And I mean, I guess it's a business thing that they do. I mean, they're going to try Oh, that's all. Yeah, thing, I mean, that's all it is. But, but it, it pisses me off because it reminds me of, like, politics. They, it's everything shitty they try and spin in their favor. I'm like, why don't you just fucking own up to it? The, the closest they got to owning up to it is, like, we're not infallible, but, you know... Uh, we're, we're pretty close. Anyway. I mean, it's great. I feel, I mean, again, this is definitely, Opus Magnum is definitely a game that I would never play just because I'm not a puzzle platformer or puzzle gamer at all. Uh, but, I mean, you know, if you have a game on more platforms, it means more exposure, which means more people buy it, which means that more people will uh, hopefully help give him money to make more games. Prep says, don't hate us, please. Basically, uh, Jole, I think they had some new employee who dismissed it offhand. Then the company had to stand by the decision in order not to lose face. But then they realized they were losing more face by standing by the decision. So they reversed it. I mean, this is possible. Someone. Yeah. But I feel like I feel like there should be more eyes on it than just one person. I don't know. And and then or, on top of that, an and then on top of that, I feel like by the time GOG was considering to release Opus Magnum on their store. Opus Magnum has been out for a little while and has garnered enough attention to be like, hey, I know yeah, this Yeah, I game. mean, it's... Whatever Hell, why not? I, I, well I can't... I'd be surprised... Your camera went off. But I'd be surprised that... Um, that someone on GOG isn't even fucking playing Opus Magnum and is like, hey, why isn't this on our store? Yeah. Like, it's weird. It's just, so, I mean, overall reviews on Steam is overwhelmingly po uh, positive 993 reviews. How many more reviews do you need to think, hey, this might be a good idea? Do you know what I mean? Like, Unless they just think they can't compete with, uh, maybe they just can't compete with Steam. But I mean, what? Like, is it really taking up that to much? With Steam? Is it really taking up that much of your resources to to put this game on your store? I mean, it could. I sure. Mean, some broadband to download it, right? Or maybe some storage to keep the file. But that's like really, other than that, like, like in a grand scheme, is it really doing? <coughs> is it? I don't know. I feel like I feel like it wouldn't be hard, even if you didn't sell that many copies. It wouldn't be hard to make up for your your overhead. Well, geez, man, I don't know. Depending on what the overhead is, I mean, you could have a you could have a CEO who's cashing in six figures, so that's that's a pretty high overhead. Uh, says sure, but also I'm sure God gets a million game submissions per day. They can't have multiple eyes on every one. That's why I think the person who ended up as the judge just made a mistake and it slipped through the cracks. I mean, I guess it's possible. I mean, they, to be honest, we'll, we'll just never know. unless yeah, they, yeah, we'll never know. Unless they actually release how they do their shit. Um, maybe someone out there uh, more ambitious than us can, can crack the case, get some inside uh, information. Uh, anonymous, anonymous source. Like, it'll be like fucking Watergate. You know? God. And we'll... Uh, exclusively put it on indie game riot we won't pay you for that information because we can't but you know you'll you'll be pretty cool in our <laughs> speaking of cracking the case apparently the entire um game library of sherlock holmes games are on sale right now on gox if you guys are interested in that those uh those games make me <sighs> those are games that i would like to watch somebody play i would not want to play them they're i, I have i have two or three of them um, and they are, they, they go back and forth for me to, between shitty and decent. <laughs> between shitty and not so shitty. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, especially the older ones. The newer ones might not be so bad, but, uh, That's just funny. because we didn't have a whole lot of, a whole lot of news this week. Um, let me ask you a question. Generally speaking, as a discussion point, uh, Oh, that wasn't if on the you, notes. If you, uh, if you were to curate a store, which we've talked about before, sure. What is your ideal way of curating? Like, how would you make sure you don't pull some gog shit, but at the same time aren't, uh, you know, Steam Direct? I mean, that's the problem. It's the loaded question, right? Uh, how do you do that? I mean, the only way, the only way you would do that is. You would have to make it like Steam Direct, but then not host anything. So mm -hmm. it, you okay. would only get paid through the click-through, and then it's so suddenly like a referral, right? 
and then the only way that that would that would be standard and substandard would be if the link is no longer viable then it gets flagged and you just delete it like th- there's i mean other than trying to like dive in and create like this algorithm that you know works on crowdsourcing and community and influencers like i don't I don't think there's a correct way to do it. I think that's the problem, is there's no right way to do it. The right way to do it is to find somebody like Indie Game Riot who has a curation page on Steam. You find that person or that entity or that group that you agree with and that you enjoy working with and talking with, and then you just follow them. That's the easiest way to do all of this. You know what, by the way, Steam, because I know you're listening to us, Steam. Gabe, I know you're listening to us. Gabe, you with those glasses, you beady eyed. I really bastard. think that. Where's Half Life Three? You I fucker. think that Steam curators should get a, a piece of the pie. Uh, it should be. For it, it should be a lot. There should be more heavier weight on a curator. I think. And a I curator think, page. I think we. I think as a curator, we should get a referral cut because that's what we're doing. We're basically referring games for people to buy. Yeah, just putting it out there. Humble does it. Why can't you? I think uh, Itchio does it too, don't they? And Itchio, yes. Yeah. Itchio does it as well. I, I think, that, so that's what you do. It's it's all or nothing. You either I, do I mean, nothing and you just let it be a referral, or you do all of it and you just go all in on curators. I've looked at, I've looked at, uh, and I've talked to you about this before, but I've looked at, uh, you know, trying to get a store up and running. And yeah. the, way I, the way I see it, 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 like, especially for a company of our size, um, it's not so much about like where Steam is like just quantity, you know, and then the big ones sell and, you know, and then you're just taking a shit ton of tiny little transactions from the smaller ones. You know what I mean? It's, it's all about right. quantity over quality a lot of times. But like a company our size, smaller than GOG, it's not so much about like getting every single indie game out there, but very specific indie games that we think are cool you know most particularly the ones that we generally talk about on the show really to be to be right. perfectly honest um and that's kind of what the steam curator page is it's all the games that we talk about on the show that happen to also be on steam which is most of them um but i i mean i think that's a good way if you want like a heavily curated like like almost a hundred percent like at least decent game, like you got some enjoyment out of it. Quality. Uh, that's how you curate a a game store. Yeah, and then you just have what fifteen, twenty people that you know and trust working for it. Yeah, and I mean, it, I mean, and there's a place, there's a place for like other things too. Like I said, uh, Steam's like got the scope. It's like the Netflix of games. You know what I mean? Whereas like has all this shit out there that you can go to, but you know a lot of it's really shit. Right, <laughs> uh, but then mixed with some really good stuff, and then you got the the itchio where it's really supportive of the people, but again, it's not curated, so there's a lot of like demos or prototypes and just first time games, game that, jams, you know and what I mean. Like that, but at the yeah. same time, a lot of people don't even charge you for that, so there's that. But True. but having you know just just the best of the best on on there. And you know, I, obviously, we like we we never talked about Undertale. So Undertale, obviously, big game, but we probably wouldn't have it on the store because we never talked about it. Like, whereas we don't have any. I don't know. That's just the way I see it. Well, I mean, and you can even break it up even further. Like, you can do it like a like the old school like Electronic Gamely Monthly magazines, where like they had a guy. So like they had a fighting games guy who played and reviewed and talked about nothing but fighting games. And they had the FPS guy who played nothing but FPS games and reviewed S- FPS games. Like, you could break it down even farther with that. So You'd that, be the console guy. Yeah, like that's what it would. Because then you would just tie yourself to whoever that whoever you are as a person, mm-hmm. that that kind of gamer. You know, like if you are really big into indie games and you really enjoy like the indie game fighting scene, well, I'm gonna talk to Josh because he doesn't do anything but play indie game fighting games. So why wouldn't I? You know, like right. he's the expert on the matter. Ooh, well, that's a big word for you maybe I, we've all heard how you read sex well no nobody will because it'll all be edited out and beautiful uh, <laughs> okay well since it is going to be edited out uh, the initial intro had to be redone for those of you listening to the recorded version because Eric <laughs> called Staxel Sexel or sex what'd you call it Se- 
Sextal? Sextal. Sextal. Uh, sextal. You, I think you just said sexal. Or sex. Sexal. Something mm. like that. It was just completely the, way off. The and, Freudian. And Freudian yeah. Yeah, that's what it is. So, you know, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, and all that. Now we know uh, what's inside his mind. Anyway, I, the, you know, the big problem about that is I don't even think of it. In my mind, it's not even so much about the curation aspect that would be hard. It's the lack of resources to actually set it up. Yeah, like it's you said, just doing it. Having, doing it. having people for each individual thing, but then that's yeah. getting people to do that. Uh, and, you know, preferably, preferably paying them to do it would be, you know, that's the preferable thing. <laughs> Uh, right. Well, which, as it was mentioned before, I mean, I mean, God could be getting, you know, a millions like game submissions a day. You can't have a team of 30 people like filing through these, uh, you know, one million. You have to have a bar how, somewhere. I mean, again, that's a, that's almost how the curated page on Steam is becoming. I mean, we get a shit ton of true. I mean, I'm pretty sure I have some stuff waiting on there now. That's just a big list. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't even touched it like a to month. Through. <laughs> well, now they now they expire after thirty days, so you got to get on now. Oh, do they? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, if you, I mean, we don't have our own store, but if you are an indie dev and you want to show us your game and you have it on Steam, you can always send it to us via the curator thing. That's a possibility. There you go. Um, we, uh, the curator list is only for games that we've talked about on the show, though. I will say that, but uh, I think it was. The one, the game that you didn't like, but I thought it was fine uh, that we played, distrust. Oh, I think I was well, it? it was in. It's in. Um, it's not finished, right? I thought it was still in. Oh, no, that's finished. Oh God, that's a finished game that we played. Oh, it's trash. That's so bad. <laughs> I thought it was. I thought it was just. Uh, I was. They were still working on it. No. I didn't know that was the final game. Ugh, <laughs> that game's terrible. I liked it uh, for what it was, but uh, that's on. <laughs> we got that through the curator page, and I liked it. And so now it's on the curator page because I'm the boss. <laughs> Stay on the curator page. Uh, why does your camera hate you? Anyway, uh, you know what's not stupid? Me. Uh, that's incorrect. Uh, what's not stupid is starting a riot. Huh? This week on starting a riot, we're talking about Delver. Uh, Delver? Delver. Yes, Delver. Not what you call it. Developer, Deve- 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 <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't Deve- worry. About it. Anyway, uh, Delver is a um, what would you call it? Is it sixteen like bit? A... Man, who cares? Anyway, it's a pixelated. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, it's it's a FBS. three. It's a it's a first person uh, pixelated three D dungeon crawler, but using two D graphics. If that makes sense, uh, like everything's flat, but in a three D space. I don't know yeah. how to explain it. But anyway, you're seeing it on gameplay. Uh, it is made by Priority Interrupt, and it is also a roguelike. Um, uh, so you're going through this. There's a bit of a story to it, but you know the whole point is to get to the um, end of the dungeon by picking up better and better loot. You level up as you go to get, you know, I think you saw on screen just a little bit ago, there were these like three cards that, that popped up, and you choose one of those traits, and it helps you get better get through the dungeon and all that sort of stuff and get some cool uh equipment uh that you pick up uh, so the traits i think are like the permanent things that you get to go through every time um the dungeon is also procedurally generated so it's random every time um it's got it's kind of interesting too is that when you also go through the first time uh like there's potions that you get but you don't know what the potions do they just have like question marks on them so the yeah. only way you get to you know how it's going to happen is uh by trying it and yeah, it could do good or bad right things you never know it could be poison that you could like throw at someone else uh healing potion or armor or something like that i uh, just never know so uh are you into roguelikes i forget um i go back and forth i'd play this game this game's pretty it is nice and it's, it's got some like uh i don't know it's well i mean what's the what's the term now it's voxel so it's kind of like a minecrafty i guess it's a little voxel I mean, uh, whatever oh that was cool <laughs> uh, yeah it's um yeah this this is something i would play it's cool you, and you get to be a little bit resourceful you saw in the gameplay too that uh um you threw like a a skull onto a, a pressure plate and it sets off a trap so you don't have to get stuck by it so all sorts of stuff like that um it's very much roguelike in the sense that you you learn as you go. Like you're gonna get killed by stupid shit. So if you're not into that, 
you're probably not into roguelikes to be honest but if you're not into that it's probably going to piss you off at first um but i think it's fun enough to go through continual continuously like again and again yeah it looks real smooth like for it being like the the pixelated oh it's nice kind yeah, of like 2d like it's a smooth. very smooth looking game yeah yeah the animation is smooth um so but yeah you you go through it again and again and like like another thing that you have to figure out is uh certain enemies what they do like there's an enemy that when you kill them uh they drop like bombs so like like you're like ha i killed him and you get blown up and potentially die that sort of thing but you don't know that until it happens so if you're not into like just if you're not into just you know <laughs> the repetitive type Dying. of thing <laughs> yeah uh probably not the game for you but i mean i personally like it yeah and i you know how i feel about repetitive shit you know you're talking Love about it. like i mean it's not grinding but you know the, the repetitiveness of it yeah. is the issue I have. It's rewarding. Yeah, exactly. And it changes every time, so you can't get bored of it. Just saying. Yeah, it's like that Spelunky. Like, uh, did they did they do like the daily challenge thing, like Spelunky does? I don't know. Oh, because I always thought that was a great idea. Like, Maybe especially should... with games that are roguelikes like this, it's like, man, how do you get somebody to come back and play your game every day? Maybe you do you that daily challenge. Them. That's killer. Should contact what? him and, and give him that uh, suggestion. All right, let's find him on Twitter. And then Twitter. Uh, say, "Hey, Indie Game Riot, this is Eric from Indie Game Riot. I suggest you do this, Hold or on. else we give you bad reviews." I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna talk to him now. So just let me. We're doing real life. We're doing live tweeting right now. I mean, that's that's the exciting shit right there. Live tweeting. Does Delver. As he's doing that, uh, some things that are also cool, too, is that there's, like, secrets that you can... Uh, it rewards exploring, which doesn't always happen in these types of games. Dungeon crawlers that I've found, tech, a lot of times are, you know, like, you explore, but it's, like, dead end or not dead end, uh, essentially, or, you know, that sort of thing. But this does reward you for exploring, even, even outside of the caves, like, in the little camp area where you can purchase shit to uh, go in. By the way, you can purchase equipment before you go in because you pick up money as you go through um which is always nice but uh like I, I think there was like a headstone or something like that outside the camp spoilers uh that unlocks a, a secret of some sort i'm not actually sure what but uh it does unlock something i know um and i think uh yeah you just saw in the gameplay too there's like little secret entrances like yeah. the little waterfall. Uh, you'll find like these little alcoves in the dungeon too that are secrets that have like some cool, uh, um, some cool equipment that you can find that's kind of on the rarer side. Wands, arrows, swords, armor, bombs. Uh, they have arrow bombs, which is pretty cool, but you can also kill yourself, which you'll learn real quick. Right. So, did you tweet at them? I did. I'll let you know. So, I'll keep everybody updated. They get right. back at me. Did you like curse them out or? No, I was just like, hey. Now, what kind of host of Indie Game Ride are you then? Uh, I'm not. Am I? Has that been official? Have we made that official? Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> you're, like, you're like the. Wait a second. You're like the Milton of of Indie Game Riot. You just get yeah. relegated to the, to the basement without pay. Do this is a problem with my paycheck. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, we're just relocating it. It's fine. <laughs> no, I said something like, "Hey, you know, does this have a daily challenge? Because that would be fun. We like fun things." Suck my ball. Oh good, I'm glad you ended with that. There you go. Uh, <laughs> well, you know what else is a fun thing? Sex dolls are fun. I don't know what those are, so I'll take your word for it. But uh, Staxel is fun, which is what we're talking oh. about. I guess sex rules actually kind of works out because we're going into a peep show. Please give all your attention to early access. This week on peep show, we've got a game that I'm sure Eric is going to fucking love. <laughs> <laughs> and it's called it's called Staxel uh, by Pluckett is the dev name 
Uh, Staxel is basically uh, Stardew Valley mixed with Minecraftishness. Mm. I knew you'd love it. I mm. knew you'd love it. Mm. Uh, I actually find it kind of fun. It is early access. Uh, it recently came out in early access, as a matter of fact. So uh, there's a lot of things. There's some bug, uh, bugs in it. but uh, and, and there's a lot of content that just hasn't even been added yet. Uh, for instance, um, like uh, it's a small map uh, at the at, at the current, um, but even in in the map there are some areas like there's these mines that I came across that are basically just there to walk around. They don't actually have stuff in it, but I'm sure that they're going to add stuff to it. Um, but basically, you there's this town that you come to. You inherit a farm, much like Stardew Valley, um, but in this case, you actually have to build. Uh, you're like it's in ruins not just the not just the yard area but the whole thing is in ruins and you have to build it up and uh, there's these like they have like a thousand different tables in order to do things so like if you want to build uh, roof parts for the barn you have to like go chop down trees and then you have to go to the specific table to turn the trees into logs and the logs into fine lumber uh, and then you have to go to the assembling table and put the lumber mixed with whatever else nails and something uh, God, it sounds like work. There's, well, I mean, that's kind of like the whole thing with these types of games. Mm. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's, it's relaxing. It's nice. Mm. And um, the, the the nice thing is that, like, I get stressed out playing Stardew Valley uh, when it's supposed to be relaxing. But that's because it's like everything's on a time, like everything's timed. Right. And if you miss it, then it's gone. It yeah. gets bad or so, you can't talk to somebody. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. In this case, it's not. Like, you just do it at your own pace. Uh, which I appreciate. Um, there's some balancing things that still need to happen uh, as you're playing through, like, like most specifically with the um, most specifically with the, the economy, because there's there's some economy in the game where you actually have to buy and sell and shit like that. To uh, you know, obviously you can make your own stuff and sell it, but in, especially in the beginning, you actually have to scrounge. Uh, like you can catch bugs and stuff like that fish blah 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 sell that off so you can purchase something that you might not be able to get just yet um like parts for whatever building that you're trying to make um in order to finish it so there's like a general store that you have to go to and purchase a lot of stuff it's kind of expensive and i think that's my biggest complaint is the balancing of that because some of the stuff is like really expensive and you sell for like piddly squat uh, mm. with a lot of stuff it's hard to, it's not a whole lot of stuff that's like really worth a lot of money and but it takes a lot of time to get it or do it yeah yeah, yeah. a little bit um like I'm, most economies yeah i, I guess <laughs> except ours that crashes in one day yeah, right. uh, well but, two two days oh sorry um i'm kind of interested in what they're going to add though because basically the whole thing is an island so if you go to the edge of the map it's ocean um there's beaches that again you can actually pick up like seashells and stuff like that and uh you can sell those or whatever um it's it's got some interesting mechanics because it's like first person 3d um you can they don't have like like legit inventory uh for like chests and things like that uh, like everything is like when you put it in the box you see it put into the box if that makes sense so if you want to like you have your own inventory that opens up but if you want to store something you have to make a box or buy a box or find a box and you actually I'll put it physically into the box store it. yeah and then you actually <coughs> see it in the box you know what I mean or on a shelf or whatever you want to put it in um, also when you build you, you you have to get like these blueprints you either buy them or uh, learn them somehow and then you when you do that you have to go pick it on the spot and put down a sign and there's like this like highlighted box that you have to build within and it's like got a certain amount of requirements for it to be considered whatever building that you're trying to build which is kind of interesting like everything like if you want to build a barn it has to have two troughs uh, so many wall pieces, so many roof pieces. Oh, okay. So and, you can't make an incomplete house like it. You have well, to it follow is, the blueprint. Well, that's what's funny about it is that it's with the requirements. It is incomplete. Uh, you can oh. you can build it as much as you want, even outside the lines. You can build it, but within that those lines, 
you just have to have a certain amount of things. Even if it's not like a completed building, you still have to have a certain amount of whatever blocks it's asking for, for it to be considered a barn and then therefore used as that. Um, Interesting. Yeah, which is kind of weird to me. Um, again, I mean, in one way, because the because the economy, I feel, is imbalanced, I'm glad it doesn't require more than what it asks for. But at the same time, logically, I'm like... Uh, like the barn only has like three roof pieces and five wall pieces. It's not even a finished building at all. You know what I mean? Like, but it's classified as a barn in the game, right? Yeah. So it's kind of weird, but um, but at the same time, I didn't have to go out and buy a million things, which would have taken forever to scrounge up enough money for that. I also tried just to see what would happen. I tried digging down as far as I could go, mm-hmm. uh, and which is the Minecraft thing to do. Yeah, and I was just like, yeah. okay, maybe there's some stuff like in the ground that I could get. It was there wasn't anything in the ground. I don't know if they're gonna add like minerals or whatever that you get, but it was all stone and dirt. And uh, I dug pretty damn deep, and it still kept going. It's like I still have not oh, reached a bottom. I don't know what happens how far you go. I don't know how that works. I also tried the same thing about swimming out into the ocean, and it just keeps going and going and going, uh, which was kind of weird. One thing I kind of like, though, is because it takes some time to, you know, walk from point A to point B, depending on where you're going, um, because there's not, you can teleport home, but you can't teleport anywhere else. Um, So if you're trying to go home from home to like a distant area on the map, you're going to have to walk your ass there. Um, But what's cool is that you can open up your map and walk with the map open and just see yourself traveling along the map. Oh, that's neat. Does that make sense? So yeah. kind of like I don't know if it makes it go faster, but you can. Uh, it, it seems like it goes faster that way. I don't know, uh, but it also so you know where you're going without having to like constantly look up and down, that sort of thing. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, right, there's townspeople. There's quests in the game. Uh, there's a day-night cycle, that sort of thing. Um, character customization. Um, there's like some different races and obvious genders and blah 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 that you can pick from. Um, they have so a lot think of game of the year. Uh, I don't know about all that. <laughs> they have a lot Come of on, like, man, Scotty or not? They have they have a lot of cool uh, just stuff that you wouldn't normally think of, like putting in these games initially, like like just just stuff that you can have around your house, decorations or even just useful stuff. And you're just like, oh, well, like that's not in Stardew Valley or Minecraft or Terraria or whatever the hell you know else is like this. Like, well, give me an example. Uh, like, I'm trying to think of something that I found. So of those games, Terraria, Terraria is the only game that I've like played, and I think maybe I played it for like twenty minutes. So, uh, did you enjoy it or no? I couldn't make it through the night, so no, I didn't I, enjoy it. I think that's a game that you need to play with friends. But to be perfectly honest, yeah, I, I can't don't have any friends, Josh. Well, I'm your friend, and we can both suck together because is that a multiplayer game? Yeah. You know, I think you do know. need to have your own server, though. <clears throat> oh God, damn it! I think there is a way to like make a free server, <laughs> but it, it's it's a pain. More to complicated. Yeah, that's the problem with it. That's the other problem with it. That's probably not that big. Of um, I don't know if they're gonna have multiplayer in this game or not. Uh, maybe who knows? I mean, they're doing. So uh, yeah, so the people we're seeing walking around, they're just AI. I'm assuming. Yes, that's all no. AI. Those are those are NPCs, and again, they give you quests and things like that. So, um, there's story quests, and then there's just like the the menial tasks that they ask you to do. But it gives you money or whatever. They give you items, that sort of stuff. So, and you get pets. Of course, you see a dog there. There's you get farm animals that you can name and blah blah blah. And what actually happens is it, it names them for you, but you have to purchase these things to rename them these like name tags or whatever and just kind of slap yeah. them with it and then rename them but it costs like 200 gold per so kind of weird that way I think I don't know why you just can't name them yeah I'm sure at least again I mean this game is pretty early access so yes very early I mean I, I'm excited to see everything that they're going to add where so. it goes uh, again Staxel by Pluckett I believe is how you pronounce it uh, it is not Sextal or whatever the fuck you called it. That's a completely different game. Any idea what you're talking about? It's this game. Uh, it's this game, but only uh, on very specific platforms. Uh, under the same, like, as hentai and stuff like that. One of those dating sims. That's mm-hmm. what it is. It's like this game mixed with a dating sim. Sextal. Oh. Yeah, I'm making fun of you. That's what's happening. That's all right. 
So, uh, anyway. <laughs> well, since you're crying me a river, maybe we should build a boat. <laughs> oh! Oh! Look at wow. that. Wow. We're going mobile. Oh. Huh? <gasps> This week on Going Mobile, we're checking out 88 Games Limited. You must build a boat. Must we, though? You must. Yeah, that's the that's the whole point of the game, is okay. uh, building a boat. I'll trust. Uh, so this is a match three style game um, with a little, a little different... Um, okay, well, I'll say this. I haven't played too many these style puzzle games um this one's got some interesting quirks to it so um not only are you just matching three to, uh, uh, of the same icons and, and creating combos and those kinds of things to kind of make your way through the game uh but you also run into certain objectives that you have to do so uh for instance you may have to you may run into a treasure chest so you have to match three to six keys to unlock it uh or you come in contact with what can only be a ninja uh, so you have like different weapons. You have brawn. You have, uh, I think one of them is a wand of sorts. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, maybe a staff. I also think you can and you can upgrade these weapons as well, um, to like a crossbow and something else. Anywho, uh, it, there, so there's there's a there's an extra adventure to the game other than just trying to mindlessly. Uh, match three. But I want Candy Crush. I mean, that's available. You can get Candy Crush. Nobody's stopping you from playing Candy Crush. I'm stopping Cleave. me from playing, so, playing some Candy Crush. Yeah, I don't know. Gross. I think you, I think you, you're a fan of those games. Yeah, King. Um, I just love King. There you go. So this, uh, this actually is a game that I personally enjoyed uh, for the short time that I played it. I think I only played it for like maybe an hour or so, and then I moved on to something <laughs> else because. I'm a piece of shit. Um, so where does building a boat come in? So you are continually trying to build uh, a boat. And the way that you build this boat is by collecting materials and unlocking chests and stopping people from stopping you uh, from building the boat. Um, but it's the game is never ending, essentially. Uh, so you never, at least unless if I miss corrected it there's really no way for you to actually build the boat what so it's a little misleading so i must try to build the boat you, you must you know you must build the boat which is why you must continually play this game without stopping you must build a boat sacrifice times hours of my life to build this boat without stopping hook line and stinker oh because that's a that's a, that's a that's a boat joke because like fish there you go boat, you can fish off there you go. Uh, so we are very witty. This game is available for uh, iPhone, iOS, or iOS and Android. Um, Android. Let's see. So it's two ninety nine on iOS. It's probably two ninety nine on Android. I gotta say, it's kind of. It I is. Kinda like I kind of like that the boat is like your headquarters, and you have like these little upgrade rooms and stuff like that, like uh, to help you upgrade these weapons like a little smithy and there's people there and yeah it's got that uh what's that fun game that's that roguelike uh side scroller your knight one? which one your knight of sorts uh rogue legacy rogue legacy god that's a game i've put a shitload of what time rogue legacy have to do with this uh it's it's similar you unlock like a, a smithy to upgrade your armor and you oh, unlock I see. Uh, the magician or not the magician but she's a like a soothsayer or something like that. Yeah, basically. I see kind of like up your magic. And, right, right, right. Okay. Um, I'm kind of interested in how many hours I've logged into this game. 16! So as you were playing it, uh, did it... I mean, I know it costs money, so there probably won't, aren't any ads. But like no, no ads. Or uh, like there's that? no trans... No. Well, um, it's been probably six or seven months since I've played it, so um, they may have changed it by then I don't usually it says if there's ads or anything like that but it doesn't look like there is uh, no it's just your it's just kind of like your solid like addiction I've got you know I'm on the crapper for five minutes so I can play a game really quick kind of game 
I think uh, I think it's yeah. actually on Steam too, if you prefer. It is. Yes, it's also on Steam. So there you go. Uh, well, you know there what else is go steamy. We were doing so good up until that point. The end of the show. So good. So hot. Uh, hot and steamy. So hot in here. Uh, it is the end of the show. If you enjoy what we do, you want to help us uh, help Indie Game Riot grow, help us help devs, that sort of stuff, uh, please consider going to patreon.com slash Indie Game Riot, becoming our patron. You get cool stuff in return. Uh, and uh, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, you can also do other things like uh, subscribe on Twitch or do that sort of stuff too. Whatever you fancy. Uh, <clears throat> you can also help us uh, non-financial ways by uh, emailing us. Uh, contact at IndieGameRiot.com with um, things to uh, like games to check out, people to, people to interview. You news. could be a part of the show. Yes, you could be a part of the show uh, vicariously. And, <laughs> oh, oh. and uh, you know, news especially. We love getting news stories. Uh, got something today on our Discord channel, by the way. We have a Discord uh, about another mobile game that we may talk about uh, next time we talk about going mobile, so we'll see. Um, and, of course, you can find us on Twitter at Podcast or Facebook.com. Um, a little, little reminder, too. I, not a whole lot talked about yet, but... Uh, Indie Revolution Expo. It's, uh, it's coming. Up. Yes. And Holly in chat, yes, Vance, uh, reminds me again, uh, Indie Fireside happening again this month. It was really cool uh, last month that we had um, a Space Quest historian uh, join the conversation as well as the people in chat uh, talk about uh, Snail Trek. But this time uh, on Indie Fireside, we're talking about Simul- Simulacra. Simulacra. I think it's Talk about me. Well, this one's actually hard to pronounce. Oh, um, <laughs> phooey. Uh, which is a uh, you can go to, you can get it on mobile and on Steam, and uh, for like five bucks I think it is. And uh, again, all the games that we come up for Indie Fireside are always under ten dollars, so that they're affordable. But if you cannot afford it, uh, please contact me, Eric, or Vance, or Prep. Uh, one of us on Discord. Uh, if you don't, uh, if you're not part of our Discord, the link is either below the stream if you're watching live, or in the description on the YouTube channel and or website, um, wherever you're watching it at. And uh, you can join us there. You can ask us, and we'll we'll do our best to help you out, um, so you can join in on the conversation. And there you uh, go. of course, at the end of the month, I believe this month, uh, it's always the last Friday of the month, so the 23rd this month is when we're doing our discussion of that game. An in-depth discussion um, on Discord, and then it will also be um, streamed live on this very channel and then posted on our website as well. Beautiful. Good times to be had. So thank you, and that is ran by Vance, a.k.a. Holly Gaborn, in the chat, and uh, that's very cool. Any last words, Mr. Hunter? Nope. I don't give a fuck. Play games that uh, you enjoy and talk about them and stay in it. He's only a little drunk. Uh, uh, say your goodbyes. Bye-bye. Doodles. Bye-bye.